One question that comes up is, why did the Messiah have to die? The bottom line is that in the government of God, when humanity fell, then the principle God has put in for the forgiveness of sin had to had to do the shedding of blood. And shedding of blood was always the means of the remission of sin. You see the principle starting out right when Adam and Eve were cast out of the Garden of Eden because uh, they were naked. When he cast them out of the garden, he made for them coats, but the coats are made of skins, and the word means animal skins. What that means is that for God to make those animal skins, animal blood had to be shed. And therefore, right from the very day they were cast out of the Garden of Eden, there was animal blood that was shed, and they got to get a clear picture of what the sin cost. And furthermore, the word for um, atonement in Hebrew doesn't carry quite the same meaning as in the New Testament, which is removal. In the Hebrew, the word kippur, uh, kapara, means a covering. And the animal skins covered their nakedness, portraying that the sin would be covered, but be covered by animal blood. Animal blood could not take away the sin. But animal blood could be used for the purpose of covering the sin. Furthermore, the death had to be by something that was innocent. And one reason God would not accept human sacrifice is because until the Messiah came, all descendants of Adam and Eve would be inheriting the sin nature that's passed down from generation to generation from Adam. And therefore, no one can die on behalf of another insofar as the atonement was concerned because they were not innocent of sin themselves, but animals were innocent of sin, and therefore the animal blood would have to be shed to cover the sin of the person who's the sinner. This is clearly understood because when um, Ada, when Cain and Abel came to give their offering, the reason why Cain's offering was not acceptable is because there was not a blood sacrifice that would not deal with the issue of sin. Whereas they accepted Abel's sacrifice because Abel offered what God required from the day they were expelled from the garden, he required animal blood. And to make the very specific, it's finally spelled out in the book of Leviticus. In the first five, seven chapters of Leviticus, there are five different offerings. The first four were all blood sacrifices. The only difference is the meal offering. And God allowed a very poor person that couldn't afford to buy a, a, a simple blood offering, offer up a meal offering. But even the meal offering would come in contact with blood because every morning, the first sacrifice of the Mosaic law was the burnt offering. And then the meal offering was placed upon the burnt offering, and therefore even the meal offering would come in contact with blood. And then furthermore, in then chapter 16, there'll be the Day of Atonement, so that while throughout the year people could bring different blood sacrifices for different categories of sin throughout the year, what happens on the Day of Atonement is that one sacrifice was offered for the whole nation. There's a common misconception that they were told that everybody brought their sin sacrifice. The answer is no. The sin sacrifices individually came throughout the year. But on the Day of Atonement, there was uh, one goat that shed his blood. And so that one goat, the blood was shed and the atonement was given to offer to all Israel. And so the blood atonement of the goat was not limited, it was unlimited to all Israel, but was applied only to those who truly believe. So the provision of the atonement was unlimited, the application was limited to those who actually believed, and they received the covering of the sin. But again, it was a covering and not a removal. And God then finally portrays exactly why blood sacrifices were essential, and that's in chapter 17, verse 11 of Leviticus. Leviticus 17, 11, that is the blood that is to be shed for the, for the forgiveness of sin. I've given you the blood to make atonement for your souls. I've given you the blood to make atonement for your souls. And in God's governmental system, blood will be the only means. It would be a substitution, but it had to come from something innocent, not guilty of sin, and temporarily that became animal blood. 
So that was the principle. So when God begins to give more and more Messian prophecies, finally a key prophecy is made in Isaiah chapter 53. The, the whole context is chapter 52, verse 13, through chapter 53, verse 12. We talks about the sufferings of the Messiah, the abuse of the Messiah, the rejection of the Messiah, but the key passage is verse 10. And it says in verse 10, when you shall make his soul an offering for sin. And um, in that passage, you have the key reason why the Messiah had to die. Messiah had to become the final sacrifice for sin. And uh, God required the final sacrifice of sin to be human blood, but had to be innocent human blood. And when she was born, he was uh, born free of sin. And uh, as often as Satan tempted him, he never subjected him himself to sin. And furthermore, he was the only Jew that kept the uh, 613 commandments of Moses perfectly applicable to him. So he's had innocent human blood. And so with the innocent human blood, he was able to provide the atonement. And like with the, Anna, with the uh, goat, the atonement of blood of the Messiah was shed for all. It was unlimited for all, but secondly, it's applied only to those who believe. And because this was the final sacrifice for sin and it was innocent human blood, uh, at that point, sin was no longer merely covered, it would be removed. So those us who now believe our sins are not merely covered, it is removed. And uh, we have a new relationship with God that the Old Testament saint can experience. Here's the difference in the book of Hebrews. When the Old Testament saint offered up a sin sacrifice, he still walked away with a consciousness of a sin because the sin was not taken away. He knew he was forgiven. His fellowship with God was restored. He still walked away with a consciousness of sin, knowing you have to repeat the sacrifice again sometime later. So the animal blood could not cleanse the conscience of the Old Testament saints. But the blood of the Messiah not only removes our sin, it cleanses our conscience. The one act of belief, the one act of reception, forever removes our sin. And we have a unique relationship with God with a cleansed conscience and not walk away with a feeling of guilt any further for what our past life was.